Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Me Monday, a weekly live feed and demo where I show you how to do something crafty and answer your questions and we just hang out. My name is Vicki Howell. So I apologize, I'm a wee bit late today. So you can, can you tell how like, it's like white behind me? Um, my studio is completely like a shambles right now. I got floors redone and while I was gone, my sweet husband painted my office. Um, and I just got back from the Pinners Conference yesterday. And so there hasn't been time to test lighting with white background and also uh, put anything back where it needs to be. So I apologize, I'm not normally late like this, but we're here now and I'm really excited because I have fun stuff to talk to you about today. So first off, Pinners Conference. Um, that was definitely, you know, experience that was new for me. I tend to do more conferences that are really specific to knitting or crochet or crafting. Um, and this is, was just kind of a general, like, lifestyle -y kind of thing. And it, it was cool. You know, I don't think the style was necessarily mine. But my classes were really fun. And I just, I really liked my students. There was just some some really, there were some really good peeps in there. And so that was a really good experience. But of course, I hit the ground running, um, driving back from Dallas and uh, dealing with Studio Palooza and now coming here. So I'm really happy though to be here um, for a couple of reasons. The, the second one is, I will show you in one, one bit. Uh, the first one is to answer your questions. So I'm gonna take a couple from the boards today and then um, as always, I will ask you at the end if there's anybody that has any questions live that I can answer. Thank you to those of you I can already see from Richmond, Virginia, Traverse City, Michigan, Pensacola, Florida. You know how I love to know where in the world you're watching from. Um, once again, this is a regular series so you can watch this every week live like this, or you can go back to my Facebook page anytime it's convenient for you. Click on the videos tab and you'll see an Ask Me Monday playlist. All right, the first question I took from Instagram, it's from Jenny Lynn, and she wanted to know where she could find patterns for yarns that have lo uh, long color changes. Uh, so instead of, not necessarily the yarns that are designed to be self-striping or that have shorter, um, almost like, like patchy, short lengths, but the longer, longer lengths. And what I suggest doing is looking for any, when you're Googling or looking on Ravelry or whatever, look for the term pooling, P-O-O-L, pooling, color, because those are really great patterns for long yarns. They're made to play with the long colors of yarns to either make something artistic, um, I mean, it's all artistic, but either for some kind of creative, like sway or lava-like pattern, or if you go to someone like Laura, uh, Laura Bryant, she's an absolute artist when it comes to calculating. She does what she calls the magic number to figure out how those long strands of color are going to play. So look up Laura Bryant for sure. And uh, I'll try and remember to put that in the show notes as well. All right. Um, the second question is from Facebook. It's from Maxine and it's more of kind of a life a life question. Um, she wants to know, because she knows that I work from my home studio, she wants to know how I get people to leave me alone. <laughs> um, and I think this is a problem that a lot of us stay at home working people have. Um, when we're at home, how do you get people to leave you alone to respect that this is your work time? To not think that just because you're at home, that doesn't mean that you don't actually have a job. Um, and that's tough. It's extra tough if you have kids and it's summertime. Summer's rough, I'm not gonna kid you, it is. Um, but in general, if you have people coming in and out, uh, what I have found is that if you're in a main, like a common area, it's, it's, really, it's really tough. And, and also, you know, difficult to make people be quiet in their own home if, if you're out there. So my, my number one tip is try to find a place that has a door. If you can have an office or a studio, rock on. If not, Lock yourself in the bathroom if you have to. But if you need some quiet time, take that time, close the door. And I have found that it works best if you, if you can give people in the household a finite time. I think that if you just say I'm working all day, that's a little abstract. But like for me, if I'm coming in to record, I'll say, I'll go to everybody in the household that's home. I'm recording for the next hour or the 30 minutes or whatever. I need you to not knock on that door. Sometimes, so if you can say, I need the next two hours to write or whatever. Doing that and then putting a note on the door to remind people really is the easiest way. And then the rest of it takes self-control. I know for me, it's really hard to not, you know, 
pick up that phone and answer the non-work related text and not get sidetracked by things coming at me from the house from, you know, people knocking on the door or whatever. So it's really part self-discipline and part just, you know, setting the standards that you expect your work time to be um, respected and uh, you'll do your best to give guidelines about that. So I hope that um, that helps you a little bit, Maxine. Um, but it's, it's tough, you know, we're kind of in a new generation of this, of where a huge amount of people now work from home. You know, we telecommute because of the interwebs. We, there's this whole new sort of like army of workers and we're having to, to sort of navigate this path together. So talk about it and, and share your, on these boards, share your tips. If you've got more tips, we're a community here. So feel free to use these boards um, under this video as part of that community. So hello to Shelly. Uh, Alexis, Chris, good to see you again. Chris just did some production stitching for me. I got your package. It looks great. I'll get back to you soon. Uh, hi, Wilma. Okay. What we're going to do today is pretty exciting, well, for me, because I get to announce for the very first time my new partnership with Interweave. Um, some of you are, from, most of you are probably familiar. If you are knitters or crochets with either, crochets, crocheters, with either Interweave Knits or Interweave Crochet Magazine or Knit Scene, or a Crochet Scene. They do a, a bunch of other uh, magazines as well. And then fun fact, they were also the company un, uh, behind Knitting Daily TV that I hosted for three seasons. So I'm really happy to be partnering up with them for a series of kits that we'll be releasing slowly throughout the fall, starting today with the first one, called Yarn Craft by Vicki Howell. It is my passion to get people to be creative um, in any means that they can. For me, obviously, yarn is my chosen medium, and so if I can get you to craft with it in any way, that'll make my whole heart happy. So I put together a series of, you know, my style kits, which means fairly quick to finish, but with enough interest that they won't be boring for more intermediate and advanced stitchers. I really want you to be able to finish something, for it to be accessible, for you to be busy and still be able to have that creative time for you. So the very first, all of the kits are named after places in California, which is where I grew up. Um, and the first one is called the Torrance Triangle Sh Shawl. So I grew up in Torrance. So I'm gonna show you, in a world when the Facebook Mentions app um, becomes more high tech. I will now edit in real time a picture of it. But now we're going lo-fi and I'm holding up my iPad to show you. This is it. Oh, you can only see, there you go. It's a really beautiful um, kind of triangle shawl that you can either wear traditionally, let me show another picture, or you can um, wear it, I like to wear them bandit style. And you can see it's open weave, and I'll post pictures of this so you don't have to put your nose up to the screen. It's really open weave and lightweight, so it will work as a shawl in the, you know, in the spring or summer, like if you're going to a wedding. But I also love it as a layering piece for the fall. I tend to not maybe wear a lot of shawls, but I do love them wrapped as like bigger scarves or I kind of wear them jauntily askew on my shoulder or whatever. So starting today, the first kit release, uh, releases, as I said, and this is the Torrance Triangle Shawl, and it'll come in a little package that looks like this. Look at that adorable little logo they put up for me. Not so cute. Um, so this is, the, this is the first yarn craft kit, and this particular kit is made out of Mrs. Crosby yarn. So I don't know if you know Mrs. Crosby yarn, beautiful stuff. Each kit comes in a little bag. I'm just gonna open it up for you to see. And there are all the kits, um, this particular kit comes in two colorways. Uh, one of them is this purple color, and it is called Wild Huckleberry. And this yarn is satchel. It's 100% superwash merino wool. It is a lightweight, but this shawl is crocheted, so I'm actually using a, a bigger hook, a size G hook, because crochet stitches tend to be really dense, and I wanted there to be a nice flowy drape for this. So even though, oh, you're working with lace yarn, I thought you said these were gonna be relatively quick, it's all lace and it's crochet, so it's gonna be nice and open weave. So no, this isn't gonna be a finish it in an evening project, but you can absolutely finish it in a handful of weekends, for sure. So it'll come with all the hanks of yarn that you need when you choose the color. And then it'll also come with the printed out pattern. 
so that you have that includes all the um, abbreviations and um, you know any any other information that you want. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk a little bit about the construction of this shawl. But this, if you watch this, even if you don't end up getting this particular kit or or making this shawl. Um, this is going to be a great explanation for you for just in general how to work a shawl from the top center out. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around from the beginning because I want to show you what I mean when I say top center out. So this is that part where I, I do, you talk amongst yourself and I'm going to try and flip this without you noticing. <laughs> okay, And this is where you get really close to me. All right, that wasn't so bad. Okay, so a lot of triangle shawls are, are worked from, I'm gonna show you this little, this is another colorway, and this is just, this is the other colorway that's available. And um, this is just a little swatch that we did. But a lot of shawls are worked from the tip all the way out this way. Let me show you a little drawing I have. So often when you're working a triangle shawl, it starts here, and then it gets bigger and you increase out, out, out. Well, for this particular project and for any top center out shawls, you're gonna start at the center neck and it's gonna open out this way so that this is your, your actual edging. This will be the last row that you crochet, not the first. You're gonna start here and it's gonna slowly, because you're gonna be increasing up the center and at the sides, you're actually gonna be creating two triangles within it. Now, I don't know about you, but the first time I ever heard that, it kind of blew my mind and made very little sense. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just say, trust me, it's gonna make sense after this, and I'm gonna walk you through the first, the entire setup for this particular shawl, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, I'm gonna work with the pattern, and I'm gonna work the first several rows, so sit back because we're gonna be here for a few minutes. So that you know how to do everything that you need to know to get started and work the entire body of this shawl. Okay, again, I don't know if I said this, but this shawl is now available on the Interweave store. So interweavestore.com and you can look up Yarncraft or my name. I will also be, of course, posting the link in the show notes. Melanie says, it's so beautiful, thank you. Rose says, I'm getting good at my camera flips, thank you. It's only taken, what are we at, 43, 44, show 44. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna get my pattern ready, is we are going to chain four. So one, two, three, Four. Now what the pattern says is that you need to half double crochet and chain one three times in the fourth chain from the hook. So this doesn't count the one that's on the hook, so that means one, two, three, four. So another way that you could say this is you're going you're gonna to work everything in that very first chain. Okay, so we're going to do half double crochet. Chain one. And we're gonna do that three times total. And then we have our beginning little nubbin. HTC fourth chain to catch, da, 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 making sure I did everything. All right, so that first chain four the first chains counted, this is going to be kind of hard to see here, it'll get easier as we go along. That counted as your, your first half double crochet or HDC and chain one. And so what you want is a total of five HDCs and then four chain one spaces. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, did that. Okay, this, believe it or not, right here is that top center area. This is this. Okay, stay with me, stay with me. It, it makes more sense as it opens up. So now we're gonna turn. Row two, we're gonna chain four. Again, that's gonna count as your first half double crochet. Chain one. 
or I'm sorry, this is going to count as your first double crochet. I'm going to get you some more light over here. There we go. Is that a bit better? And it's also going to count as that chain, that first chain one. Now then you're going to, I think I told you before that we're going to be increasing on both outsides and in the center. So we're going to make another double crochet in that same stitch, the same stitch that you already started in. Then we're going to make another chain one. Just an overall note for this particular pattern, you're never going to be working into the chains. So that's just something that you can keep in mind. You're always going to skip them. So then we're going to, so like I said, we're skipping the chain. And then we're going to, one, two, one, two, three. Go to the next one. And that next one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, just needs one double crochet and a chain one. And then we're going to be at that center stitch. Now, if you want, you could put a marker there. Um, it might help. It's up to you. Um, be, my aforementioned studio being a shambles meant I couldn't find my markers. So here what we want to do is we want to double crochet chain one three times in the center. This is what's going to make those increases I was telling you about that will open up the two triangles and make that flat edge at the top. So I'm doing a double crochet chain one. Yes, this is, a, this is available. I see this, the questions scrolling. This, is, this kit is available on the Interweave website and I'll post a link at the end in the show notes. All right. So this is our center. Now you can see here that it's a clear, it's clear where the center is once you get going because it's going to be the only time that there's three stitches. Then you skip the next chain and then you're going to do another double crochet in the next one, chain one. And then when you get to the last half double crochet from the row below, you're going to do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And you can see already, see this little, this little nubbin? This was where you started, and can you see how it's already starting to form that triangle? Is that making sense so far? Okay. So now that was round two. Round three, this particular pattern I use for the first portion of it just to get you it to the stitch count number that I need for the next stitch pattern. We're just going to alternate rows of half double crochet and chains and double crochet and chains. So for this row, which would be row three, we're going to, we're going to chain three. That first chain again will count as the half double crochet plus a chain one. We're going to half double crochet in the exact same stitch as the first one. And then we're going to half double crochet in all of the double crochets. So that means skipping all the chains until we get to that center one. Okay? So here's the next one. Uh, let's see, Susan wants to know where I'm putting my hook. I'm putting it under both loops. So you can see this is the stitch. You see that? See there's the top of the stitch. I'm going underneath just like you would always when you're crocheting unless the pattern called for different. Okay, now I've got to that center. I've gotten to that center stitch. So that means that I need to work three again. So that means Double crochet, chain one, three times. Okay, so now we're rounding out and we keep going to the end. We chained one, double crochet, 
chain one, double crochet. You're going to see those two on the end. And now we're at, we're at the first one, which would actually be chains, and you want to do two double crochet. Oh wait, these were half double crochets, weren't they? I just, I just riffed in the center of it. Let's go back. Let's go back in time. Okay, so these should actually be half double crochets. All right, so I ripped those out. And you can see how easy, like, you know, when you make a mistake, how easy it is to pull back this yarn. This Mrs. Crosby's yarn does not at all um, make it difficult for you to need to do that. Okay, so I'm working three half double crochets in the center. And then I'm working one in each of the double crochets from the row below. Before I get to my last stitch, I want to go into the, into the top of that turning chain and work two half double crochets with a chain one in between. Now I wasn't going to show anymore, but because I just did that snafu, I don't want you to be confused. Now this row, double crochet, half double crochet, now, it me now we need to go to the back to the double crochet. I wish I had better make sure you guys can see. So that means we chain four, that counts as our first double crochet, plus the chain one. We're going to make another double crochet. Oops, I accidentally got into the space, so you go under, back through the loop. And again, we're not working into any of the chain spaces. We skip the chains and only work on the top of the either half double crochets or double crochets, depending on what the, the row is. What I love about this is you can, you know, you can see the, your shawl forming before your eyes and it's kind of magical, to be honest with you. For me, it wasn't a um, construction that I could visualize without seeing it form in front of my eyes. So once I did this, and it, I actually learned how to do this for knitting before crochet, it just kind of blew my mind. It was so exciting because it was a completely different way to construct something than, than I had thought. But anyways, you get the idea. We're going all the way around. There's the triple in the center. And you would continue doing that for, here's a piece that I've already finished, or not finished, but you wanna keep doing that until you get to row, nine. So you're essentially you're just going to keep continuing. You alternate half double crochet and double crochet rows. From here we're going to move and we're going to be doing these little cross tri uh, triple or treble crochet stitches. So we're going to start, let me just reattach my hook to this new piece. Yes, Karen, it does take shape quickly. I know that's, what, that's what's fun too, is you get to work with these smaller yarns, like these lighter weight yarns, but you can st it's still accessible if you're super busy because we're working with a larger hook and crochet is a bit faster. Okay, so now, this on your pattern will be row nine. We're going to, one, two, three, four, we are going to chain four at the beginning of this row, and that counts as your first treble crochet or triple crochet, depending on what term you prefer. They're interchangeable. So from here, we're going to triple crochet in that same stitch, so that means we wrap around twice, come through the first two loops, and the second, and then the third. See, that's where you get the, that's why it's a triple crochet. And then we're gonna chain one, and start the whole, okay, and this is where we start the fun criss, criss crossy. Criss cross will make you jump jump stitch. Okay, so, man, I'm getting old. All right, so, to do that, we're gonna skip this first stitch, this first double crochet, and again, we're always skipping the chain, so I'm just kind of glossing over that. We're going to triple crochet in the stitch below, around the bar, or the post of the stitch below,
Uh, Teresa wants to know what happened to my class on uh, Craftsy, why it's not there anymore. They retired it, unfortunately. But I do have crochet classes on Creative Live now. Okay, once you've created that, you're going to go back and work the other stitch, the, the triple crochet, in the stitch that you, or around the stitch that you skipped before. And what that does is that does a little crossy action. And really, it's going to be subtle, but it'll give it a little texture. Then you're going to chain one, and you're going to move to the next one. So you skip the next stitch from the row below, and that means that you're going to be working with this one. So triple crochet. Go back, get that other one. Now I'm going to show you another option just, in, just because we're all here together and why not. If you don't like that on the back working through the front post is going to give you a ridge, another way that you can do it is not work around the post and you can just work in the stitch. So you can, again, skip that first one and you could just make your triple crochet through the stitch as usual. And then come back and work in the stitch that you already skipped. It really just depends on the look that you like. So you can kind of experiment with that. So I'm going to show you again. So you're going to skip this stitch, go to the next one, come back, work in that last one. And you're going to do that all the way until you get to the center. And I'm just going to work really quickly to get over there because I just want you to see what you do in the center. Um, it's really the same thing you've been doing from the beginning, but just with triple crochet. But I want to make sure that you guys are squared up with how we make this triangle shawl. Okay, we're getting closer. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Chain one, pull out. And this hook that I'm using um, are the same hooks that I always use, or the, the Clover Amore hooks. I really like them. They're super comfy. Of course, any hook will work. Just sometimes people like to know what I'm working with, so. Okay, I am done with my last little crossy cross action. So now we're at our center one. We're not going to be crossing. Yes, Rose, it is kind of like a cable, absolutely. We're not going to be crossing in the center. In the center, what we're going to do is we're going to be just doing treble crochets so, it, with chains. So I'm going to go ahead and triple crochet in the center, chain one, and I'm going to repeat that two more times, so three times total. So nothing new application-wise, just a different stitch so that you see you've got just a solid three there so you can see how that looks different and I have this other piece kind of already done it's a different it's the in the other colorway but that means whoops we're not even there yet that will that will mean that you have this stitch pattern everywhere but then you you get this really nice point it's harder to see because this yarn's variegated um, that will be in the center. And then later, once you, you're just going to do all of those rows that I told you, that's all you do for the entire body of the shawl until you get to the edging. And that's the only time that you change things up a bit. So I think that's everything for this. Um, it's really, it's really sort of simple. You'll get in your groove easily. Um, you know, like I said, the first few rows where you're trying to figure out like what shape is this going to be? I'm going to turn us around again. So here we go. What shape um, is a little crazy, but um, after that, it comes together really, really easily. So thank you so much for hanging out and letting me show you that. And again, you can find those kits on the Interweave store. I will place a link. Um, you can always search for Yarn Craft. And throughout the next three months, I think, I'm going to be doing more of these because there's six kits total. They're all accessories except for I have one really cute baby um, couch and style sweater. Um, Elaine wanted to know where you get the pattern. Again, that's Interweave Store. It comes in a kit. 
with the Mrs. Crosby's yarn and the pattern. Um, okay, let me just do a quick scroll through and see if there's any questions that I didn't see. It looks like, it looks like you guys were getting it. Yes, Rose, you caught me. Rose caught me on a half double crochet row. I pulled that out. Um, okay, it looks like we're good. All right, well, awesome. Considering we had to throw that together and I'm in half of an office, I think we, I think we got it out. I think we did it. So I'm gonna be posting a trailer that kind of, a little like intro that tells more about the kits. As always, I will be here to answer your questions. I hope you'll go over and you'll, you'll treat yourself to one of these kits to either make for someone as a holiday gift or just to give yourself. I think we need to all give each other or give ourselves a little handmade treat every once in a while. Um, and I always say like, whenever you get nervous about investing in really nice yarn, and a pattern that's, that you know is gonna be beautifully photographed and was tech edited and the, and the designer was actually paid a livable wage and all of that stuff. Remember, you're not just paying for the shawl, you're paying for the entertainment, the hours of entertainment it gives you, um, the feeling that you get after making something beautiful and put it out to the world. So, I don't know, I'm kind of into kits, I kind of dig them. Well, thank you so much for being here. Tune in next Monday as usual, the same time. I promise I'll be on time next week. And I'm not sure what we're gonna do next week. I'll have to look on, uh, I'll have to look on the old schedule. Also make sure that you tune in this Thursday. Craftish the podcast on iTunes will be back. This week I am interviewing Natalie Shannon. She is from the company Alabama Shannon. So make sure you check that out. I'm looking forward to that. And in the meantime, if you want to watch any more of these videos, like I said, go to Facebook or YouTube. I have a playlist on YouTube. Facebook, just click on the videos tab and there's a playlist and you can listen, you can watch, I think there's 40 something of them. And you can also hear Craftish on Stitcher, SoundCloud, through my website, vickihell.com, um, or pretty much, you know, any place you find podcasts. As always, have a great creative week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.